Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to create this design with this number counter animation using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and also a library called Odometer. So now, if you reload this page, we can see that we have the animation for these numbers. But if you scroll up and if you scroll down again, the animation doesn't happen. But if you reload this page and if you scroll down, here we have the animation working. And uh, it is also responsive. So if you decrease the width of the browser window, and if I reload this page, and if you scroll down, here we have the animation for all these numbers. So we're going to see how to design this in this video. Let's get started. All right, here I have created this folder called counter animation, and I just opened it with VS Code. Now let's create the necessary files. So let's create a new file and let's call it index.html. And let's create another file called style.css. And let's create another file called main.js. And let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And here let's link our CSS file. And here let's link the JavaScript file. And let's start with the markup of our design. So the first thing we will do is we'll create this first section. So for that, I'll just create a section tag. And here I'll just type hi. And uh, we'll create one more section. And uh, here we can see we have this section and then we have this stats displayed over here and then we have another section. And uh, here between these sections, let's create a division with a class of stats container. And in that for each of these statistics, we need to create different divisions. So let's create a division with the class of stat. And in this, we need to have two divisions, one for the number and the other for this text. So let's create a division and let's give it a class of odometer. And here let's add zero because the numbers start from zero. And then let's create another division with a class of type. And it is a type of subscribers. So Let's type subscribers over here. And here, let's also add one more class so that it differentiates itself from the other numbers. So here, let's give it a class of subscribers odometer. And let's go ahead and copy this stat division and let's paste it two more times. And the second one is uh, videos. So here, let's change this to videos odometer. And here let's type videos. And then the last one is projects. So here let's type projects. And here let's give it a class of projects odometer. Right now let's go ahead and add the CSS. So let's go to the style.css file. And uh, first of all, let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS Code. So once you have this installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML file and click on open with live server. And here we can see everything is being displayed in the browser. Now let's go ahead and start styling this. So first of all, let's target the body and let's remove the default margins. And let's set the font family to Roboto and sans serif. And then let's select the section and for the section, let's give it a height of 100 viewport height. And let's set the background color to FEFAE0. -E and uh, this is a section. Let's bring this text to the center. So let's type display of grid and place items to the center. And uh, let's go ahead and set the font size to 90 pixels. And uh, this is how it looks. So we have both the sections designed. Now let's focus on this section right here called stats container. So we have this division with the class of stats container. So let's start styling this. So I'll just type stats container. Now we want all these stats to be one next to the other. So let's set the display to grid and let's type grid template columns and let's set it to 1fr, 1fr, 1fr. So now we will have three columns. So here we can see we have three columns over here. And let's go ahead and add some margin. So let's tap margin and let's set the margin to 30 pixels top and bottom and auto for left and right so that it is in the center horizontally. 
and uh, let's also set a max width and let's set it to 1000 pixels. Let's also add some padding. So let's tap padding of left and right. So we can just tap padding in line and let's set it to 16 pixels. Now this padding will be essential for smaller screens. So if we decrease the width of the browser window, now we can see that we have this padding over here. Right now let's go ahead and style the stat division. So here we can see inside the stats container we have stat. So let's tap stats container, stat. And let's set the background color to EF233C. And uh, let's add a padding of 24 pixels. And let's set the text align to center. And let's also add some gap between these elements. So here for the stats container, let's add a gap of 24 pixels. Right now let's go ahead and set the color of the text and uh, let's set the color to EDF2F4. And uh, now let's style this odometer. So let's type stats container, stat, odometer. So here we can see we have added this class of odometer for all these numbers. So let's set the font size of the odometer to 50 pixels. And uh, let's set the font weight to bold. And uh, this is how it looks. And for this uh, type, let's add some styles. So let's type stats container, stat, type, and let's set the font size to 20 pixels. But now if you take a look at this original design, here we can see that for these two numbers, we have this plus icon. So let's add that as well. So for that, let's go back to the index.html file. And wherever we want the plus icon, let's add a class of plus. So let's add it over here as well. Right now let's go to our CSS file and here let's type odometer.plus. So when we have both these classes added to a division, then we need to display the plus icon. So we need to add an after element. So let's type odometer.plus colon colon after. And in this after selector, we will add a content and let's set the content to plus. And this after selector should be relative to this odometer plus. So here let's tap position relative. And here let's tap position absolute. And here let's type top to zero and right to minus 16 pixels and font size of 20 pixels. So here we have this plus icon displayed over here. Now here we can see that the plus icon is being displayed, but it is not displayed over here beside this number. So let's right click over here and go to inspect. And if you take a look at this, here we can see that this is a division and because of that, the display is set to block. So it takes up the whole width. So that's why this after selector is on the extreme right side. So let's go ahead and go to the odometer and let's set the display to inline block. And now we can see that the plus icon is beside the number. Right now, let's go ahead and add a media query so that it is responsive. So let's type at media and let's type max width of 700 pixels. So whenever the screen width is less than 700 pixels, all these tiles inside this block will be added to our design. So let's type stats container and let's set the grid template columns to 1FR so that all these elements are displayed one below the other. So let's decrease the width of the browser window. And now we can see that all these elements are displayed one below the other. So it is responsive. Right now let's go ahead and add the number counter animation. So for that we're going to use a library called odometer.js. So let's go ahead and get the CDN of the library. So you can just Google for odometer.js CDN and you'll find this link of cdnjs.com. And let's go ahead and copy this tag from here. So it is for odometer min.js. So let's copy the script tag and let's paste it over here. And now let's go ahead and copy the CSS. So let's copy the CSS of the default theme. So there are a lot of different themes. So we have theme for car, we have digital theme, we have minimal plaza and all these things over here. Let's go ahead and copy the default theme. So I'll just go ahead and copy this link tag and let's paste it over here inside the head. And the next thing we need to do is we need to create a new odometer instance. So let's go to the main.js file and I'll just create a function for that. 
and I'll just call it create order meter and we will get the element over here and the value so this value is gonna be the number so here I tap const and let's call it order meter equals new order meter and here we can add some options so here let's tap L which is the element and let's set it to this element right here you can name this anything you want and then let's go ahead and set the value to the value that we get from here right now let's go ahead and call this function first of all let's go ahead and uh, reference these elements so let's reference this subscribers order meter so I'll just tap const subscribers order meter equals document dot query selector subscribers order meter and here let's tap create order meter and here we need to pass the element which is subscribers order meter and then we need to send the value which is this value right here 29,800 so let's add that over here now if we go back to our design here we have this number displayed but uh, by default the number should be zero so here instead of value we need to pass zero and then we need to update the value so let's tap order meter dot update and let's pass the value over here and now we can see that the animation is working so if we reload this page we have the animation working over here now we need to do the same for all these other values so let's copy these two lines of code and let's paste it down here two more times and the second one is videos order meter and uh, then the last one is projects order meter and uh, let's go back to our design and uh, for the projects we need to pass the value 89 and here we need to pass the value 790 and uh, this animation is not working so let's go back here we have two s's so we need to remove that right now the animation is working for all these numbers now the last thing we need to do is uh, now if we reload this page and now if we scroll down we can see that the animation has already finished so if we refresh and scroll down quickly we can see the animation now if we refresh this page and if we wait for some time and if we scroll down the animation is already finished so what we need to do is uh, when this element is inside the viewport or when it is visible on the screen then the animation should start so for that let's go back and uh, here let's add some code so we're going to use intersection observer in javascript for this so let's tap const observer equals new intersection observer and here we need to pass the callback and options so I'll just call it callback and options and let's create these values over here so let's type const options and uh, here in the options you need to pass the threshold and uh, you can experiment with different numbers I have come up with this number 0, 0 0.9 which means that it will be triggered when 90% of the element is in the wave port right now let's create the callback and in the callback we need to have entries and observer and let's create this function and let's go ahead and loop through all the entries so let's tap entries dot for each and for each of the entry I'll just call it entry and let's create an arrow function and here let's add an if condition and let's type entry dot is intersecting so this will check whether the element is in the viewport and let's also add one more variable and uh, I'll just call it has run so if the animation has run then this will be set to true so by default it will be set to false and here let's go ahead and check if the animation has already run so let's tap not has run so if the animation has not run then the order meter should update so let's cut this from here and let's paste it over here and then let's go ahead and set the has run variable to true right now the last thing we need to do is here we need to type observer 
dot observe and here we need to pass the element which we are getting from here so let's tap el and now let's see whether this works so let's go back and let's reload this page and we are waiting for some time and now let's scroll down and now we can see that when the element is inside the viewport we have the animation running so no matter how long you wait over here when you scroll down and when the element is inside the viewport then the animation will run and if I go to the mobile version and if I reload this page and if you scroll down here we can see that the animation of the first number has finished and if you scroll down again we have the other animation running so everything is working all right all right so that's basically how you can add this number counter animation using html css and javascript all right so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day